Welcome to another video on VX2 TV. Today we're going to be testing out the firmware 140 on the EOS R and we're going to see if the eye detection capabilities are worth the hype. Roll the intro. All right, welcome friends of the internet. For those of you who are here for the first time, welcome to the channel. For those of you who have been here before, thanks for coming back, I appreciate it. Um, today we are gonna be looking at the EOS R and the new firmware update 140, and we're gonna take a look and see if this new eye tracking feature that it has is worth the hype or if it's just a lot of hot air. So uh, let's get into it. Oh. And one more thing, right now, this part of the video here, I'm filming this with the EOS R and the 35 millimeter F1.42 USM lens, and we're filming at 1.4. So nice shallow depth of field, and it's, uh, it appears to be tracking my eye right now. I know you can't see the square. I just look like a fool dodging air, but uh, yeah, it's working. So um, let's get into this review. All right, I'll be honest with you guys. I'm pretty excited about this firmware. Uh, I never upgraded my EOS R firmware from the date I got it. It was still at the factory set firmware from uh, the launch so i guess that was 100 or whatever it was um but when i read about this firmware update and the eye tracking capabilities i got pretty excited because i used to own the a7 III and the one thing i really liked about it was that square that uh followed the eye around now i didn't like the square at first because i was coming i was a dslr shooter and the a7 III was my first mirrorless so when i tried mirrorless for the first time, it was like, what, what, this is so weird. Why is there a box around the eye? And then you get used to it and you're like, okay. And the one thing that I missed when I got the uh, the EOS R is the, uh, the box around the eye, because I mean, I'll be honest, I've never had issues with the uh, EOS R missing focus during a photo shoot. It's always spot on, even with the box around the face for face tracking, the eyes were always sharp. I never ran into issues saying, oh, the nose is sharp or the ears are sharp and the eyes are soft. Like I never ran into that. I was always happy with the EOS R's focusing ability, but the little box around the eye just gives you that little bit of reassurance. And that's the thing you had with the Sony's. When, when you're shooting video and you're looking at the camera, it's uh, it's got the square around the eye so you know that the eyes are sharp. So uh, with that being said, let's, uh, let's jump into this test and look at some footage I shot so we can check out Canon's little box <laughs> and see what it looks like around my eye. Okay, so if you just bought the EOS R and want to upgrade your firmware and you're not too sure how to do that, I made a video about that. I'm going to link it right here or put the thumbnail here. The link will be down in the description below. But if you want to learn how to upgrade the firmware, I made a pretty quick and easy video. Check that out. Okay, now let's look at some footage with the little square. Okay, so now let's take a look at the lenses I'm going to be doing this, uh, this review with. First, we have the EFS 10 to 18 millimeter, and this thing is uh, my favorite vlogging lens. Every time I vlog with the EOS R, this is what I have on there. And here we go. This is the, uh, the Boca King, the 85 millimeter F1.2 L. We have the 35 millimeter F1.4 L and uh, the RF 24 to 105 F4 L and this Bohemoth the 300 millimeter f 2.8 L and uh, we're gonna test all these lenses with the new eye tracking feature and see how they perform all right first up is the 300 millimeter f 2.8 and I've got to be honest nah, I wasn't having the greatest results with this as you'll see here in a second the uh, the eye autofocus was having trouble picking up my face and I did give it on purpose a really tough scenario to uh, to work with everything's backlit I'm standing in front of a window and I'm kind of in the shade here. It's picking up my face, it's picking up my eye, but it's not locking on and it's not staying locked on. So, I don't know, I'm kind of disappointed with this. Let's take a look here again. Yeah, it seems to pick up my eye for just a second and then it's gone. There, it picks up my eye. And, and even if you notice when it loses my eye, when I put the camera in front of my face, it doesn't go to face detect. It just, there's nothing, there's no square on the screen. I picked up my face there and yeah, see it's it's locked on my face, but it's not focused at that point. And here here was interesting. I clicked on uh, where my face would be, but I accidentally targeted the window. So uh, <laughs> the camera is focused on the crud on the window and it's doing a great job of avoiding me. So uh, kudos to Canon on that. The lock on feature really works. <laughs> Yeah, that's kind of funny actually. But yeah, the 300 millimeter f2.8, I think this is the generation one lens. And yeah, not so good with the uh, eye autofocus there. 
All right, next up we have the RF 24 to 105, and this is a fantastic lens. I'm super happy with it. In fact, I'm doing a hands-on review video, and that'll be dropping on the channel whenever it's done. But uh, yeah, nice lens, really fun to use. Uh, here we go, it's tracking my face, same lighting situation, very backlit, dark face um, in the shade, but it's tracking my eyes, it's picking me up, it lost me there for a second, and it loses me when I get to the, edge of the edges of the frame, but if I remember correctly, there are no uh, focus points on the edges of the frame. I think like the 10% on the left side and right side, that just empty space, there's no actual focus points, but performance here is definitely a lot better than the 300 2.8. This is usable. I mean, this is not a sports camera, so it's not going to keep up with the, the fast movements, but it definitely locks on. It's usable. Okay, here we are with the 24 to 105 f4, and we are shooting at 24 millimeters now. Same tricky situation, very backlit. You can see my nice living green wall bookshelf in the background that I made. That was a lot of fun. But uh, yeah, camera, I mean, the focus is okay. I don't think it's on the same level as the Sony a7 III yet, but considering that Sony's had a long time to develop their focus system and Canon's just making these patches as they go and this is their first uh, mirrorless camera, I say they're doing pretty good, pretty good. Here, you know, up close, it's locking on a lot better. Here, obviously, my face is in the light a little more and the camera is locking onto the eye and tracking it a lot better than it was in that trickier light situation. But I wanted to test out that tricky light situation because when you're shooting weddings and events and things like that, sometimes you're gonna have backlit scenarios. I assume that uh, with nice, even daylight when you can actually make out what a human face looks like, the camera works a lot better. But here, I'm trying to trick it here by going into the light and the shade and the light and the shade, and it's doing a good job. It's, uh, it's holding true. And here's the little footage out of the EOS R so you can get a feel for how it's tracking my face as I move around. It's pretty good, I, it's pretty good. I don't think it's at the Sony level, but I think it will be soon. I think Canon's really working hard to develop that, so it's only a matter of time before Sony and Canon are neck and neck, but uh, so far very happy. All right, I get excited every time I get to use this lens. It's one of my favorites, the 85 millimeter f1.2 L2, and about the bokeh, oh my God, drool, 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 love this lens. Uh, I don't know why the Lumix decided to capture some funky colors on the LCD screen here, but it did, sorry about that. And you can see this lens is having a little bit of trouble catching the eye. It's a notoriously slow lens at focusing, so maybe that has something to do with the, uh, the slow acquisition of eye focus, but uh, once it gets it, it's good. Like I, I could use this for portraits. It's definitely locking onto the eye, but here it, it just lost me for no reason. It should have gone to face detect and then back to eye detect, but it just, it completely lost me. So I don't know if it's the longer focal length lenses that seem to have an issue, or maybe it's the older lenses that have an issue. We'll have to keep experimenting and figure that out. All right, and here we go. We have the 35 millimeter F1.42, and uh, I bought this lens about a year ago, and I'm wondering why I did not buy it sooner. It is amazing, love it. Okay, so here we go. It's a little bit on the slower side, acquiring the face here, initial impression, that's what it looks like, but it seems to track the eye a little better. And I think the wider angle lenses did a better job here. It, that, that was pretty slow again right there, but uh, it seems to me like the wider angle lenses seem to lock on and hold eye tracking or track the eye a lot better than the uh, the longer focal length lenses. And here we're trying to go face to eye, face to eye. I'm not getting the box around my face to show off face detect, but the camera is focusing on the camera, which is closer to the lens. And uh, there it was pretty quick. And overall, I'm pretty I'm, I'm pretty happy with the uh, the 35 millimeter. It uh, it seems to work a lot better than the other lenses. There, nice face detect, eye detect, face detect, eye detect. It's good to see that that's working. And now I'm gonna try and trick it a little bit with some sunglasses. And these are mirrored sunglasses. And here, I don't know why it took so long to focus on my face. Now it catches the eye. And again, the focus is just really slow, really slow. And I have my EOS R set to the fastest focus settings too. But uh, it does seem to have, I mean, now it, I, I don't know. I don't know, it seems to be okay now that it understands that I'm wearing sunglasses. Not that the camera has any kind of understanding ability, but it seems to pick it up now. But when I first jumped in front of the camera with the sunglasses, it was, uh, it was a little bit confused. And now it's doing nose detect. <laughs> but uh, yeah, 35 millimeter worked a lot better than the other lenses. 
And now in my opinion, we have the best vlogging lens for the USR, the EFS 10 to 18 millimeter lens. And this lens is designed for APS-C size sensors. And of course, we all know the EOSR has a crop with 4K footage and this lens just works perfectly with this body. So uh, I'll make a review on this lens in another video, but for now, let's talk about this lens and eye tracking. All right, here we go. We're starting at 10 millimeters and you can see it picks up my eye pretty fast. It's actually, in my opinion, out of all the lenses I've tested, I think this lens uh, follows the eye and tracks the eye the fastest. I think it might have something to do with the fact that it's an APS-C size sensor or lens. So it's really using the sweet spot of the, uh, the sensor instead of using the whole sensor to track my face. Everything else was filmed in uh, 1080p. And this is obviously 1080p as well, but it's cropped down to the APS-C size and uh, it locks onto the eye fast and it, it really focuses fast. I'm pretty impressed, I'm pretty impressed. And this is a cheapo lens. You can get it used for two, 300 bucks. And now we're at uh, 18 millimeters and uh, it's tracking my eye pretty good. All right, it's good to know because if you're gonna be vlogging with a lens, you wanna make sure that that lens you're vlogging with is catching your eye and staying locked onto your eye instead of wandering around. Yeah, this is definitely the fastest focusing out of all the lenses so far. All right, uh, so now I'm vlogging with the 10 to 18 millimeter here. And uh, I'm just testing to see if this lens tracks my eyes in vlog mode. Is it working? Is it following my eyes when I zoom in and out? And yes, it is. It's tracking my eyes looking at the screen now. And that's awesome because uh, this is an awesome lens for vlogging with. It's so light, it's plastic build, and it's pretty sharp. And uh, there we go. So this lens is now complete. I would say I'm pretty confident that I can take this lens out with this new firmware and uh, I can vlog with it and it'll track my face, no problem. So uh, that's good to know, good to know. All right, let's uh, hop back on the computer and I'll let you know what I think about this test after I've looked at all this footage that you just saw. All right, so there we go. Let's sum this up with the final conclusion and I'm gonna address the elephant in the room first. And that's the big question everyone has. Is the Sony a7 III better at focusing than the Canon EOS R? And yes, it is. Uh, the eye tracking on the a7 III is definitely better, but I will commend Canon. They, they, they brought out this firmware. They've been working on the firmware. They've been like putting them out and uh, they are getting better and better and better. And I think it's just a matter of time, maybe in a couple of months, maybe next year this time, they'll be neck and neck. You won't be able to tell the difference between Sony and Canon. So definitely kudos to Canon for working on that and keeping us customers happy so cheers to that. Um, in terms of the lenses here, I feel like the older lenses had trouble focusing and the longer focal length lenses had trouble focusing. And uh, they, they, they would sort of focus on the eye, but they would lose the eye pretty quickly. And uh, I think maybe that's just something that has to be addressed in the software, or maybe that's just older lenses just don't have the technology. Like I know the 85 1.2 is a notoriously slow focuser, so uh, I wasn't really expecting that to focus on eyes and track it with blazing fast speed, but uh, it is what it is. The EFS 18, uh, 10 to 18 millimeter was really fast. It focused super fast, it locked onto the eye. The 35 millimeter was great, and the RF 24 to 105 at 24 millimeter was really good as well. At 105, it was good as well but the 24 millimeter it seems like the wider the angle the lens the uh the faster it tracks the eye and uh yeah that's the conclusion so far this is definitely a step up if you haven't upgraded your firmware this is definitely worth it and uh you know hopefully canon uh, comes up with some more firmwares and uh, they match sony but uh, as a canon user i am definitely happy with this firmware it's it's a plus and uh recommend it all right, people of the internet, here's a little time-lapse video of me making this vlog. Does that throw you off a little bit? How do you like them apples? <laughs> All right, so uh, thank you for watching. Uh, if you like this kind of content, please subscribe. I'm going to be making a lot more content like this in the future, as well as the behind-the-scenes photo shoots and all that other kind of stuff as well. Uh, hit the bell notification icon so you can keep up to date with all the videos that we're dropping. And uh, is there a third thing? Uh, like, subscribe, share, leave your comments down below. I'll get back to you. And this is honestly my least favorite part of making the vlogs. It always messes me up, but uh, you know what to do. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next video. Cheers.